Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Based on the time you are assessing this material, welcome to C++ program. And this is week four. And if you are accessing this video on YouTube, this is a course run on coolcharts.com. So you can visit coolcharts.com and under courses, this course will be found under information technology courses. So when you choose that one, you can choose C++. So if you have courses, under the courses, we have information technology. So under it, we have the C++. You can have that one there. And this is week four. So you can also have access to the week one as well there. So to today, this week, we'll be considering the while loop, the do while loop, the for loop, then the continuum and break statement, the nested loops. If this is the first time of being on this page, when you go to the here yeah, below, if you are writing by clicking on chat with instructor on this page. So if you have any issue, just log in, click on the chat with instructor and send me a message so that I can reply. Now, what is a loop? Now, programming, there may be a case where you need to repeat the same statement over and over and over again until a particular condition is met, is reached so that the loop will end. So loop is just a repetition. So if you have one uh, code, some thing, uh, lines of code, then and you specify the condition that to end the line of code. So that line of code will be executed a number of times until the condition you specify is reached and the loop will end. Okay. And this is a basic way of writing the loop. This, we are now on the while loop. There are a number of loops. We have the while loop. We have the do while loop. Then we have the for loop. Okay. So these are the three main loops you have. So while loop, two while loop, and the for loop that we'll be considering today. Okay, so the while loop, we have the while statement, then in the bracket we have the condition. Last week we learned about if statement, and before we completed the if statement, we also considered about conditions, like whether something is greater than or equal to those operators last week we considered them. Okay, so that has a menu of condition. Maybe you check if a variable is equal to a particular variable. So while that condition is true, whatever you put between the curly bracket will be executed on so the condition becomes false. Now when it becomes false, it will skip the block of code, then it will move to the this part of your code. Okay, we so said from the above say in the block of code, the while will repeat over and over again until the condition the while loop is false. Okay, so like I've explained, so it whatever you put between this curly bracket, it will be executed over and over again until the condition you set here will be false. Then the loop ends. So an example is a write a program that takes two numbers and output the minimum and maximum of the entered numbers. The program should repeat until a user decides to quit the program. Okay, so this will repeat it until the user decides to quit the program. So in that case, we need to initialize, declare a variable and initialize it so that at the start of our program, that condition will be true. So that there will be a repetition of the lines of code we put between our curly bracket. So, after the first loop, then we ask a person if he wants to continue or to quit. So when the person uh, says he wants to exit, then we'll make it that the condition here becomes false so that the loop ends. Okay. But if the person says continue, then we'll make it that the condition will be true so that it keeps on going 
the lower loop until the user enters something that will make this condition false. Okay, now in the while loop, before your while loop will run once, before your while loop runs once, you have to make sure that there is a variable in this condition which has been initialized that makes it true at the first start of the con of, of your while loop. Because if this part is false, when your program starts, this block of code will never run. So you make sure that at the start of your program, this condition is at least true once. So and when in, uh, in the Kelly bucket, then you can update the condition variable so that it will be false at a particular time. Okay, so let's look at this example. So we will only add the loop concept to the program we wrote in week three for the minimum and maximum numbers. So in week three, we considered the how to check the minimum and maximum uh, value. Okay, then we came across this uh, this statement that if you have the condition here, if this condition is true. The variable year will be assigned to what is here. If it is false, the variable year will be assigned to what is here. So this condition is for determining the maximum value between two numbers. Okay. So if you have your A and B input, which has been entered by the user. Okay. So if A is greater than B, the value A will be assigned to a maximum value. As if it is not, then our value B will be assigned to a maximum value. We've done this thing in the uh, week three already. So we are only adding a loop to the, uh, to, to this code we did previously so that at a point in time, the user can exit the program. Okay. So we have float A, B, and max. So the maximum is for uh, assigning them between those two numbers. The maximum of it we assign it to this mark. Okay. Then we have in our loop we have to initialize a variable, like I said, so that at the start of the program it will be true. So that whatever you put between these curly brackets will be executed. So we initiate we initialize a variable we call int exit is equal to zero. Okay, so here yeah, our exit is equal to zero. Then so here this is our condition. It says while as it is not equal to one. Okay, so while as it is not equal to one. Now our exit is zero. Zero is not equal to one. So this condition will be true. So it means this part of the code will start running in the curly bracket. So it will output enter the first number. As you already know, see how this will output on the screen. Then C in will get the value from the user. Then C out tell the user to enter the second number and see in will get the second number from the user then our max is equal to this equation this statement like i've explained if our a the user enters is greater than b then the value will be stored in our max otherwise the value of b will be stored in our max so now we can print the maximum value over here now after printing out the maximum value now this is where we ask the user to enter something in order to either make the condition true or false. So it says enter one to exit program or any other number to run again. So if the user enters one, our exit value will now be one. So in the second cycle of our loop, one is equal to one. So this case will be false because it says one shouldn't be equal to one. So if the user decides to quit our program and enters one, our exit value is one. So here the condition will be false because one is not, uh, one is equal to one. But this condition is that one shouldn't be equal to one. Okay. So once one is equal to one, the condition is false. So whatever we put here will not be executed. Okay. So that is the explanation we have. Then we have a second example. It says write a program that prints out the numbers from 1 to 10 in 
horizontal and vertical okay so horizontal goes this way vertical goes that way so for the horizontal we just print the numbers and leave the space between it for the vertical we have to leave the e and dl so that they will be they, they to start on a new line on each of the loop so let's run let's Let's program this code and refer to the lecture name. Okay. You see, let's say we start a new project. Console application. Next, next, here, let's say week. week four. Okay. Okay, so here we are going to print a number from 1 to 10. Okay, so it means we will declare, we to declare, so let's say int i, let's say we start from 1, so i should equal to 1. Okay, now we write a condition that while our i is less than or equal to 10. Okay, then we'll print out, so see out, see out i. Now we want a space, if, if you don't leave a space, it will, the next uh, number will be stuck to the next one, so you can leave a space so that there will be a space between the numbers okay now you have to make uh, increase this value of i so that at the point in time your i will be more than 10 then the loop will end now in the loop in the in the loop the while loop per se in inside the curly bracket, you have to write a con uh, you have to either increase or decrease or get an input from the user so that you can make the condition false at a particular time. So in this case, since we are printing from one to ten, we will increase our i so that when it gets to eleven, since eleven is not less than ten, then it will quit the program with the uh, execute. So we have as it so you have i plus plus okay so what this line of code does that at the starting point our i is one so one is less than ten so this condition is true so it will print our value of i okay now i plus 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 is for increment so whether you write it i is equal to i plus one or i plus plus is the same thing so this will be increased by one. So on the first cycle, the first the first cycle, we have our i is equal to one. Now we increase it, so it become two. So in the second cycle, our i is two, so it will be printed here. Then we increase it, so now our i is three. Then it goes again, then it prints three. Our i when we increase become four, then it prints four. Our i when we increase is five, then it prints five. Our i when we increase is six, then we print it. Our i when we increase it's uh, seven, then we print it. Our i when we increase is eight, then we print it. Our i when we increase is nine, then we print it. Our i when we increase is ten. Now ten is this, this is this is less than or equal to so ten is equal to ten. It's still it will print. Now after ten when we increase it becomes eleven. 
Now, 11 is not less than 10. So, this will be false. Then, it will exit the loop. So let's run this code, then we go to the vertical one as well. Okay, so as you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, now I left a space here so that it will not be uh, crowded to each other. If you don't leave a space, then you have one, then apply it immediately, you have two, three, and the rest. So, so uh, if you don't want the space to be output, then you don't need to add this part of code. Okay, so that is for the horizontal and the straight line. Now we'll do the vertical one. So for the vertical one, after each of them, you just need a e, e and D L. So that it moves to the next line. So after printing the first uh, line, then it will move to the second line. Then in that order. Okay. So it's just this part of color to change. Okay, so guys, as you can see, you have one, two, three, up to ten. Okay, so that is it. This example. So that's what I've explained is what you are seeing over there. So increment plus plus is the same as the value plus one. So that is the increment. So in summary. First of all, you need to initialize a control variable, a variable that at the first start, this expression will be true. Then you need to update that variable that makes this contribution to be true, so that at a point in time, it will make the condition to be false, so that it will exit the loop. If you don't do that, you get an infinite loop, a loop that never ends, because the variable is not updated so it will always be true they keep on running 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 so in some programming if you have infinite loop then the program is get stuck because the other part of code will not be run because instead of it to exit the loop it will be repeating 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 and so the other part the code below the loop will not run so always remember that you need to update your control Variable, the one you use to check to make the condition true. So you need to be updated so at the point in time the condition will be false. Okay, so now we are on the do while loop. Now the do while loop is similar to the while loop. The only difference is that in the do while, you see that in the while loop the condition is here, but in the do while the condition is at the bottom. Okay. So this means that whatever you put between here, it will run. So once it run, before it will check the condition to know if it needs to repeat it again. So if the condition is true, then it will repeat. If it is not true, it will not repeat. So the difference between the do while and the while loop is that for the do while, at least one of the, uh, at least uh, the whatever you put in the curly bracket will be run once, even though the condition is false, because it will run at the first time before it will check if the condition is true. If the condition is true, it will repeat it. If not, it will not repeat it. So for the while loop, for the do while loop, at least 
whatever you put in the while loop in the curly brackets here it will be executed unlike the while loop because the condition is stop if the condition is false it will never get here but because the condition is over here it will run at least once before it will check if the condition is true or false if the condition is true then it will repeat again so the advantage of what we normally use the do while loop is that if you want to get an input from the user and you don't want you want to give the user a second opportunity if the input is incorrect then we use the do while loop so that the first time the user enters the information if it is okay the loop will not continue because it becomes false so the loop will not continue but if the input is incorrect then this condition will be true so it will repeat and repeat and repeat until the input is is correct then it will stop asking the user to enter a value so that's normally what we use a do while for if you are taking an input from the user and you want the loop to, con uh, to continue until the user enters the appropriate uh, input then you can use a do while uh, so we have an example it says let's say for example okay this example we have int a is equal to uh two int c is equal to ten okay now this says that in the while loop it says that a should a is greater than three this is false because our a is two two is not greater than three but if you run this code you it will output your your a to be two because the condition is checked over here okay so it will run this part of code by printing out the value of a before it will even start before it will even come here then and check if the condition is true or false then if the condition is false then it will not repeat at all so if you change it while loop if you change it to the while loop to not at all because here your a is not greater than three so it will not run at all in the while loop so that explains that so like i've explained that the do while loop it can be used for validation of it so that you continue asking the user to enter a value until the appropriate value is entered so for example if you ask a user to enter a score okay in last week we did a grading uh the grading system of uh the grading system of a school okay so if you want to make sure that the user don't enter a negative value or a value more than 100 then you can use a do while to get the um, the score before you grade it so in this case if the user enters negative so since your negative value is less than zero then the loop will start again because this will be true okay now if the value is more than 100 this will be true so the loop will start again so it will keep on asking the user to enter enter until user enters a value which is more than zero and not uh, more than 100 so last week we said that all means that if at least one of the condition is true then it will make the entire condition to be true so if we have negative one, negative one is less than zero. So it will make the entire condition to be true. So the the uh, the loop will repeat itself. Okay. So that's normally what we use a do while uh, for normally for input validation. So that uh, if the person enters the correct input, then it will exit the loop. But if the input is incorrect, then it will keep on asking the user to enter until the input is correct. Okay. So now we are on our last loop. So our last loop is a for loop. It's called a for loop. Now this is how the for loop works. So in the while loop, we initialize a variable before we started the loop. But in the for loop, we initialize it in the in our for. 
So when you call the for, then in the bracket, you initialize your control variable. Okay, then you add your semicolon. Then you write the condition at the point where you want your loop to end over here. Now, you because the condition will be will stop at a particular time, you can increase or decrease the descent. So if you are starting from the lowest to the highest, then you have to increase, increase until it gets to the highest point where you want to reach it for the loop to stop. Now, if you are starting from the top to the bottom, then it's supposed to decrement. So that one is going to be negative, negative. Neg minus, minus is decrement. Plus, plus, like I have proved, is increment. Okay, then whatever you want to be executed here, while the loop is repeating, then you write your code over here. Okay. So the for loop is similar to initialization. In the while loop, we initialize it. By the for loop, we initialize it here. Then the condition comes here in the while loop, but the condition comes here. Then in the increment, it is over within the uh, curly bracket. By here, it is over here. The increment or decrement. Okay, over there. Okay, so now let's write this example. It says, write a program that takes an integer from the user and output the multiplication table for the user. For instance, if a user enters 2, the output should look something like this. Okay, so the multiplication uh, table, the number we, are, we want to multiply we, we, we are the ones which are here. So in case the person enters to we have two, 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 two here. Now this is where the increment uh, uh, is. So we have from one it is to two, from two it increases to three, from four it from three it increases to four, five, six, and so on. So in the multiplication table, normally if you are from Africa, the multiplication table that they make us recite it normally ends at twelve. So if you are writing or displaying the multiplication table from 1 to 12, then your for loop should initialize at 1. Then the condition is that while it is less than or equal to 12. So when it is less than or equal to 12, the condition will repeat, repeat until it gets to 13. Then the condition will exit. Okay. So now each of the I each of the control variable is just multiplied by the number the user enters. So if the user enters three, you just multiply your control I value with the three. So let's write this code. So let's write this code. So we said for a for loop, you first of all write four. Then you write the value. The data type so it's normally looping is we call iteration or iteration. So normally people use the control variable, they use the i to represent it for iteration. So we have i, then initialize we are starting our this uh, the uh, increment from 1 to 12. So the condition is going to be why our i is less than or equal to 12. And since we are starting from the lowest to the top, we have to be i increment. We have to increase our i, so it's going to be i plus plus. Okay. Okay. So now we will see out. We will see out our i. Now the multiplication. We use the x for the multiplication. Now the results. Uh, but first of all, we need to ask the user to enter the multiplication that it wants to uh, compute. So we can declare a, an integer value so we can say multiplication. Then we tell the user to enter the multiplication number it wants to compute.
Okay, so you get it from the user. So we have our C in. Okay. So we have our multiples. Okay, so here, let's make it too long. So let's make it more. Okay, so here, so we have our mods so that it will read. So when our i is point, it will read one times and the user enters three, for example. Then it's going to be one times three. Okay, so now we should have our test equal to over here and we continue. So here we can do the modification straight forward. So we have star mod. Okay. Now, because we want it to start after the each of the loop, we want a new line to start, then we have to add a new NDL so that after this, the next loop, it will start on a new line. Okay. So now we are, we have at the first, at the time the loop starts, our i is equal to one. This mod is, is fixed based on what the user enters. So if it's three, it will always be three. If it's two, it will always be two. Okay. So now we start from one. We set a condition while our i is less than or equal to twelve. So when it gets to one, yeah, because we are starting from the lowest to the highest, we have to use the plus plus. We have to increase it. So in our first loop, it is one. So we have one times, if the user enters three, so it becomes one times three is equal to, then we do the multiplication. So the value here will be three. Okay, so in the second loop, it will increase from one to two. So here will be two times three. So what is three? It's equal to, so to multiply the two times three, which gives us six, and so on. And so it gets to 13. When it gets, when I increase to 13, because 13 is not less than 12, then the loop will exit. Since there is an error somewhere. Oh, see how it's. And let's learn how to Why is this? Is? Oh, see how to Why am I living? Okay, so if I enter four, okay, so here at the beginning when the loop, our i is one, we have one times four, which is four. Then our i will be increased, so plus plus may increase, so it increase to two. So we have two times four, which is eight. And it increases to 3, so 3 times 4, which is 12, and so on, until it gets to 12. 12 times 4, which is 48. Now, when it increases to 13, because we said the condition is when our i is less than or equal to 12, 13 is not less than 12, so it raises the loop, then it stops over there. Okay, so that is just an example of here. That is a solution now. Right here in the station for it. Okay, so write a program which prints out years starting from the current year to the past hundred year, hundred year. Okay, so here starting from the top, 
to the lowest. So like I told you, top to the lowest, we use decrement. The lowest to the highest, we use increment. So here, we will initialize we will initialize our uh, current here. We are in, if, if, if we are watching the video, the video is made 2020. So our current here, our eye can, our, our eye will be 20, 2020. So we will, our eye will be 2020. So we will continue the loop while our eye is greater than or equal to 2020 minus uh, 100. So that is when our so what I when I is it equal to or equal to 2020 minus 100. You can do the calculation straight or you can just subtract it together. So now we have. So if you decide, okay. So this, I will just explain the material. Yeah, so we don't need to code it. Okay. So here we have in our loop plus hundred year. Okay. So this material was made 2019. So if you are coding this year, your this year is 2020. So we have 2020 minus hundred is the last uh, hundred year. So here. Your current year, so we have in year with this one with 2020. So here, if you are starting from the top to the lowest, it should be greater than. So why it is greater than or equal to the last hundred years? Okay, that will be the condition. So that at the point in time why it is not greater than that, then the loop will end. Okay, so here from top to the bottom, you have to decrease. So you keep on decreasing, decreasing on, so the condition is false. Okay. So here it says, then you print out the result. So now is it for? Then print out here, starting from the past hundred year to the current year. Okay. So starting from the past hundred year, so you can subtract the. I uh, hundred from the past, hundred from the current year. So we do the past hundred year. So here you are starting from the lowest to the highest. So that one is going to be increment. So our I will be initialized with the your current year minus hundred. So if you are in 2020 minus hundred, the value you get will be the value you use to initialize your I. Then the condition should be that. Here, if you are starting from lowest to the highest, so it will be while it is uh, uh, less than or equal to, so less than or equal to your current year, then you have your year plus plus. So from lowest to the highest, we use we increase the value. Okay, so here we have the eight year, the last hundred year is this, so this is where you initialize it. Then your year should be less than or equal to the current year. But it's going to start from the last hundred to the current year. Now from lowest to the highest will increase. Okay, then we see out the value. Okay. So that is it. So for you, you have to work on the uh, grading system we did in week third so that you ask, uh, you put the code in a while loop so that after the first time the user finishes to grade the grade, enters the score and the grade is shown, then you give the user an opportunity to enter maybe a value. It can be 1 or 0 or S uh, or U to exit or so that after the person finish, then it will enter a value if you want to exit or if you want to continue, then the, then the program will start again. Okay, so that's what you, the project you can also work on. So in the grading system we did last uh, week, in the pre uh, week three, you 
put it in a while loop so that after it has shown the, the score or the grade of the score, then you as a user, if he wants to continue or exit, then the user enter a particular either a number or a character to either exit or continue. So once the user has entered that, then you either continue the loop or you exit from the loop. Okay. Now we are on the continue and break statement. So the difference between continue and break statement. So in the when the break command is encountered, it causes crew to exit the current loop immediately. So if you have a break, if you have a break, once the break is applied, it will exit from the loop completely. So whatever you are, the other part of your code will not run because it will, it will exit, it, it will get out of the loop. To get out of the loop completely, so that's what normally the break does. So the format of the break commands is as follows: so if you have maybe a condition, and if the condition is, is is true, then you break. So here it will exit the loop. Once you have a break there, the loop, it will exit the. Loop. Okay, so even if the condition has not been reached yet, it will exit the loop, the loop, so that it just comes to this part of your code. So break normally exits your loop. So the break exits your loop. So if you whether your your condition has reached or not, once you apply the break, it just exits your loop. Okay, so an example says write a program that some positive integers entered by a user continuously until a negative number is entered. So here one, once the person has entered the person number with sum, once the person has entered the person number with sum, now when the person enters a negative number, then we just exit from the loop. Okay, so in the example, we have int sum, the int uh, number. So at the, at the start here, our sum has a value of zero. So enter a positive integer. So we get the value from the user. Now, if the value entered is negative, then we break. So it will exit the loop. But if it is not negative, it means it's positive value. We add that number to our sum. So we keep on adding that number to our sum until the user enters a negative number. Then it exits our loop. Once it exits our loop, because of the break we have here, once it exits, then we we'll display our sum result here. So for a break, whether the condition in the while loop has, uh, has been false or not, so whereas the break is encountered, it will exit the loop. So the loop will end. So that is the difference. But for continue, for continue, it is not so. So for continue, it says the continuous statement is used in the while for and do while loop. When the continuous statement is uh, executed in the loop, it keeps the remaining syntax in the loop and proceeds with the next iteration of the loop. So with the continue, once the continue is encountered, it will not exit the loop, but it will not run the other parts of your code in that, in that particular uh, uh, the, uh, cycle. So let's say for example, if the condition, if, if this part of my can continue its switch when the cycle is on the second cycle. Now, if it were to be break, it will, it will not go to the third cycle. Okay, but if the continue, once it reach, it will not run the other part of the code for the second cycle, but it will continue to start with a third cycle. Okay, so that's the difference. For the break, it will exit the loop, but for continue, the, it will not exit the loop. But it will not run the other part of your code in that particular cycle and to repeat the cycle again. So that's normally what a continue does. Okay. So that's the difference between the continue and the break. So here, when we have a continue, when it, 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 it's rich. So for example, if you have negative number found in the data, 
So when negative number point the data, it will not count to this part of the sum code. So it will it will go with the next repetition again. Okay. So once it is positive, then it will come to the point where we do the sum. Then it will sum the no surprise it is positive number. Then we have the nested loop. So nested loops is a loop in a loop. So if you have a loop in another loop, it's what we call the nested loop. So if you have maybe a for loop in another for loop, it's also a nested loop. If you have a while loop in a for loop, it's also a nested loop. So a loop in a loop is what we call a nested loop. Okay. So let's say for example, you have this multiplication table and you are asked to uh, output this multiplication table. Now in this multiplication table, you need to use a loop in a loop. You need to use a loop for the uh, horizontal and the loop for the vertical. So that when, the, the, when you are on the horizontal, uh, that one, the horizontal uh, I is, will be 1. For example, if it's starting at the first loop for the horizontal, it's going to be 1. Then for the vertical, it will start from 1, then, so this one will multiply the 1 itself, it gives 1. Then it increases to 2. So it will be 2, then it will multiply that uh, horizontal, then it's, it's 3, then to multiply that uh, horizontal, which is still 1. Then four, then to multiply that horizontal, which is the one. Five, then to multiply that horizontal, which is then twelve, then to multiply that horizontal, which is the one. So once this uh, the uh, the vertical one has reached there, which is the inside the horizontal, then once it has reached, then it, the horizontal one will be increased by one. Then once it's increased by one, now the horizontal is, is two. Okay. Then the inner loop, which is for the vertical, will start from one again. So we have one times two, which is two. Then to increase the vertical one will increase to two. Then to multiply with this, which is two. Then to increase with three, then to multiply with this, and so on. Okay. So let's look at, look at our code. So in our code, this is our vertical. So this one is our horizontal. So the first top code is for our horizontal and loop. So that one, it will be one. So when our horizontal start from one, then in the inner loop will be the vertical. So the vertical one, will, that one, it, you can see that there are different variables. So the outside, the horizontal one has I and the vertical one has J. So when our i is 1, the inner one, which is the uh, vertical one, will start from 1 to 12. So it will start from 1 to 12. So when it is 1, it will still multiply our, our uh, vertical, uh, horizontal one. So then it increases to 2. Then it still, if our i is at uh, 1, then uh, 2 times 1. Then it increases to 3. So 3 times 1. Then it will be 4, 4 times 1, increase to 5, 5 times 1, increase to 6, 6 times 1, and so on. Now, once the 12 has reached, then that uh, loop has ended. So it comes, then it goes to this one, the I will increase to 2. So once it increases to 2, then the inner loop will also run. So which will start from uh, 1 up to 12. Okay, then it will do the multiplication here. And it will continue. Okay, so that is it for this week. Now, what is your assignment for your week four? Is this write a program that reads a set of integers and then finds and prints the sum of the even and odd integers? Okay, so you you have a loop, uh, a loop that will uh, be taking the integer values from the user. So once you take it from the user. You check if that integer value is even. If it is even, you add it, you add to the even uh, summation. If it is odd, you add to the odd summation. Then afterwards, you just output to 
the user uh, the sound for the odd and the sound for the even. Okay. So thank you very much for picking uh, this uh, week course. So I try to put the week uh, three, the grading system we did in the three in, in a loop so that you ask a user to enter the score, maybe the user enters 80. Now if 80 is with A, you output it. Then suppose you tell the user if he wants to continue or exit. So you can say enter maybe G e to exit, then C to continue. So when the user enters uh, uh, C, then the loop continues again, then it comes to enter your score, then the user enters the score, then the grid counts. Now in the case where the user enters C, then the loop also ends. Okay. When the user enters G, then the loop ends because the user says he wants to exit the program. Okay, so you try to do that one as well. Okay, so have a nice day and enjoy your, the rest of your week. So hope to see you in the subsequent week.